Another thing that people ask me lots of questions about, and usually the same questions, is about my farm. Well, I did not inherit it. I bought it with my own money 20 years ago, February 1989. My father found it for me. He was just out taking a Sunday drive and saw a farm just for sale and saw the hills in the background and decided to take a cold walk on a snowy day and check it out. Well, the next weekend he called me up and asked me if I had anything to do on a Sunday afternoon in February and I said no. So he says, come take a look at this farm, it's quite interesting, maybe you'd like to buy it. So I did and, wow, I bought it. It had an old closed gravel pit that had been closed since 1970. That's where my spring is and all my big jumping hills. It had uh, rolling land at the back, a part-time creek that runs in wet weather. Not another random kitty. I always get these things in my videos. There's even another one by my feet. Gee whiz. <laughs> Anyways, had rocks and hills, open space, trees. It, it just seemed to have everything a city person like me could ever want. I never lived on a farm. I have never lived on my farm. I have never done farming. I rent the land. There's uh, 63 acres that are rentable. The other 37 acres of my 100 acres, I call the back 40. That's where all my roads and beach and stuff, you know, places and stuff where we do our fun stuff is. For the 63 acres, I get $150 an acre per year from farmers who rent it. And they grow wheat or corn or soybeans. That adds up to 9,000 a year. So when I bought it, I use the rent income to pay my mortgage payments, the interest, most, mostly just the interest, and to pay my taxes. I eventually, eventually interest rates went down and I remortgaged my first mortgage on my house with my equity and made myself have a bigger first mortgage on my home in London. The farm is in Lucan, Ontario. I cashed out that money that I got with the larger first mortgage, the equity, and use that to pay off my farm because my mortgage on my home had a lower interest rate than the 10% I was paying on the farm because that was a private mortgage. Of course when I bought my place it didn't have anything. It was just a field. There wasn't a driveway, there wasn't electricity, no services, no building. I did all that myself. A little bit of help from my friends. I bought really old, junky, heavy equipment rusty as you can see in that, fixed it up as cheap as I could and did what you see today, made the driveway, used my own gravel to put around my building and make laneways. You know I don't use a dump truck much anymore because most of my road work is done now. It was about 10 years ago where one of my people, where a female named Jazz who regularly came up to the farm, it was her idea to make a beach back in the gravel pit. So I bulldozed out that area that was all grown in and made that lake with my dozer and figured out a way to make a valve to control that spring. Well, nowadays land in that area is worth about 5,000 an acre or about 500,000 for 100 acres with no buildings. I think my farm is worth more because I've done so much improvements on it. it certainly is a interesting looking farm when you view it from Google Earth. Look at those guys, they just won't leave me alone. I'm trying to make a video. I actually bought the farm just for fun. Since I was 19 years old, my father had forced me to rent buildings to do my car repairs in and store my junk and do that kind of stuff, which I was used to be doing in his garage. He used to say I monopolized his garage. So I was renting buildings in the country. I was just renovating old farm buildings, three different farms that I rented over the years. Got the rent really cheap because I fixed up these crappy buildings for the landlord and would do my stuff in them. It was so handy when I did get my own place to, you know, have my own shop that I had built myself and be able to do all these things without paying rent. The farms long ago was paid for, so it's all profit for me now. YouTube pays me well for the stuff I do at the farm and I'm still making that land rental, so 
It's wonderful. That, that was the best thing I ever did was buy that place. Since there is no home on the property, I am permitted to build a house anywhere on the property I want. I haven't 100% decided where I want it. I would like it back in the forest where it's rolly and higher land and beautiful. But then the problem is plowing out the laneway in the wintertime because it blows in so quickly. It would be much simpler to build it by the, you know, by the barn. Maybe I will, but at the moment, since I live in a city and I do repairs, it's so easy to get access to get parts for all the stuff I do. If I move out there 20 miles or 30 kilometers away from a city that has parts, well then the kind of stuff I do becomes a nuisance and a chore because I have to spend so long driving each way just to get one little stupid thing if you know if I'm in a bind. I don't want to have a huge stock on, on everything since I'm mostly retired now. So someday I'll build a home and I'll live there. I've actually never lived there. No one ever has. Oh yeah, now I'm getting a lot of questions because of a recent video about my pond. I forgot to mention in that video where the water goes. I didn't bury that one foot diameter concrete pipe that's there. Whoever made that pit 50 years ago obviously hit water and it started filling up the pit so to make the pit usable they had to drain it. Well that pipe is pretty deep under the ground and it goes about a kilometer to the main highway that's in front of my farm. And as far as I can understand it connects into what's called a muni municipal drain system which eventually runs towards the Asabal River which is what we cross about five kilometers before we get up to the farm. So. I did take a tour all around my farm when I was draining the pond a couple years ago. No sign of the water coming out above the ground any place, so it has to go there. A little over 10 years ago, just to see if that spring was viable and had enough pressure to make a pond at a usable depth, what I did was I put a 5 gallon steel paint pail upside down on that drain hole in the ground and packed mud around it then tied a big heavy-duty cable to it and ran it over to a laneway near the, where the pond is. Well, in one month, the whole gravel pit filled up to the top and overflowed onto the neighbor's property. <laughs> well, that was no good. It sure looked nice to have a lake that big. That was about four acres worth of water, quite deep. But we couldn't use our hills or, you know, do our jumps and ride our off-road equipment in there, so it would be no fun if it was just boats. So then I tied that cable to a pickup truck, 4x4, and just yanked it, pulled the bucket off, all the water disappeared. Simple as that. Then I got the idea to make that valve I made. It's been working fine ever since. The way I got the underground electricity to the back of the farm, which is uh, 600 meters from the building, or about 1900 feet, was I made a ripper that I welded to my bulldozer blade. It works something like those machines you see attached to a bulldozer that rip a big roll of plastic tile underneath farms to drain the land. That's how, what gave me the idea. So I just copied such a thing on a smaller scale and welded above the blade in the dozer was two bars going up and an axle rod. I used my tractor to pick up the big 600 meter roll of wire, copper wire, that was made for underground, loaded it up on that axle rod. There was a piece of conduit that came down and curved and like a hook that was three feet long with a really heavy steel that was welded to the bottom of my dozer blade. So I dug a hole in the ground with my backhoe, threw a car rim in there, the hole was three feet deep, drove over with my dozer, set that hook into the hole in the ground beside the rim. The rim was the anchor to tie the wire to, so the wire was fed down through that conduit from hanging above the dozer, came out into the hole tied to the rim. The ripper was lowered in the hole and then I just drove backwards all the way to the gravel pit right down to the pond and dragged that wire ripping a trench three feet under the ground while it was feeding out and unspooling from the roll up top. It's been working fine for the last five six years since I did that so that whole you know 600 meter underground wiring job three feet so the plows could never plow it up or anything only cost me six hundred dollars and one day of work to build my ripper and one day to drag it all and bury it. What more simple can you, how much more simple than that could it be? That's redneck engineering at its finest.